So, I got off early from work. What better way to spend the afternoon than to cut some rocks and look at the finds that I found from last week. Scarlett found this one. How cool was that? Dun, dun, dun. This guy, I didn't give these guys a good scrub down, um, but he's pretty. The big blue. He's not actually blue chalcedony. What that is is probably like a residue left from the basalt stone that he was in. There's probably some stuff going on in there. One way you can tell, a good friend of mine suggests using a torch or a flashlight to shine it under with a high lumens and it should help you better see what's happening in there if anything's happening in there i don't have a bright enough torch to try it today i'm going to leave this guy until i have access to a bigger saw this one i'm going to give him a cut and i'm probably just going to make him a half 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 cut We've got some rhyolite with chalcedony going through it. I'm gonna cut him, because who knows what's going on inside. There's some chalcedony going in there, finishing out there and out there. I hope no one thinks it's sacrilege just cutting these rocks. What it is is when I cut into them, it'll give me a better indicator and a better experience with maybe knowing what to look for in the future. I think it's safe to say I'm gonna go along this, this way there. Now this one, it just looks like a chunk of ugly something, but as I'm learning, sometimes the ugly ones can be beautiful on the inside. I'm not saying this one's ugly, it's mainly chalcedony with inclusions. There's a bit on this tip of common opal. I think I'm gonna try and cut him just a window across here. And maybe cut this guy. He's rhyolite with chalcedony in it as well. Last time I did some cutting, I noticed my blade wasn't cutting as well. I asked for any, any tips from anybody and I got tons. So I'm gonna put them into play today. I'll explain them as I go. First off, I'm gonna take this guy off. The reason being is that I wanna be able to cut from the back of the saw. In order to do that, so now that blade's exposed so I can take a rock pull it this way as it's spinning that way hopefully meaning the water will spray that way and not towards me another thing I want to talk about very important is safety this might look like overkill but a friend of mine kindly sent me a couple of news articles on silicosis it does affect people more that are working in the stonemason trade. I don't want to take the risk. There's a few ways to minimize exposure to the dust from the rocks. So water, always use the water. That not only co cools the blade, but it actually keeps the dust settled. It wets it. Once it dries, that dust then be can become agitated and loosened up and in the air, it can go into your respiratory system. Same with the dust on top of the saw table. So that's why I'm wearing this. You can make fun of me if you want to, but it kind of looks cool. I feel like I'm about to fly a jet, like I'm in Top Gun or something. You guys can call me Maverick if you want to. Uh, either way. This saw has a, a reservoir under here. What I've found though is when I turn it on, it goes from max to min pretty quickly with all the water that's expelled from the blade. Now there's different ways to supply water to your saw. I'm turning my tap to just a little bit, kind of like that. I'm going to turn it on, lock it into place, and then set that in the reservoir to provide water to there constantly. All of these tips, I'm not going to say any names. I appreciate everyone, and I'd love to give everyone credit for, for their tips, but the reason why I'm not is because I don't want anyone to pick on a tip or anyone who suggested it because that's known to happen on YouTube. <laughs> Where are we up to? The brick trick. 
getting a red brick and running it through the blade is supposed to help clear the diamond pieces in there of metal. I meant to do it a couple of times. Another thing I wanted to talk about also with the continuous diamond blade is it won't actually cut your finger. I don't try it, there's no point. I'm trying it now to show you. But the reason why I'm saying that is because fear of the blade can keep people from doing certain cuts where their fingers might need to get close to it. Point out though, this is a continuous blade. There is no gaps in the blade. If you have gaps in the blade, I wouldn't even try that at all. It's probably gonna take your finger off. But don't be afraid if you have a continuous blade. Hey, that sounds like a motto or something. <laughs> all right, we've got our safety stuff on. Now we can look at the rocks and feel confident that we're doing it somewhat properly. Ah, oh, when cutting the rock. Yeah. When cutting the rock. When you do it, don't put too much pressure on the stone. You let the blade do the cutting. All right, I think that's most of them. Oh, have fun, get creative. Yeah. That, those are good tips. There we go. Those are our contenders. Might look kind of pretty. What should we start with? That was really different. I was keeping the rocks ba rock basically from bouncing off of the blade, not pulling it too hard. It felt a lot smoother. So I guess what I needed to do originally was just be patient. Get another one done. I'm not gonna show you the cutting for all of these. Cool. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, um, that worked really well, the, the pulling of the stone gently. There was a lot of control over the stone for pulling as well. Funnest part though, is we get to look at them now. <laughs> and I always like to um, run the blade real quick just to spin any water off of it. That basically, you don't wanna, you don't wanna leave your blade sitting in water when you're not using it. So that was another tip from someone else. All these good tips. He wants to look at the rocks. Here they are. Let's look at them. This guy has a funny cut to it. It was too thick. So I had to go one way that way and then flip it and cut it that way. Very pretty. Let's see how beautiful that is. So that would be chalcedony mixed with uh, common opal in there. You could feel the difference too. It was a little bit softer because of all the inclusions. That just looked like a, I don't know, something you wouldn't really catch your eye. But it's stunning. Look at the details in there. What I've done with this is that when I had cut down that way, and then back down this way, the corner of the cut started to chip. So I've used the saw blade to round that edge off a bit. I'm planning on tumbling this one. Oh yeah, really pretty. A little light bit of color around the edges from oxidization. It's got a little bug in there. Bruzy cave, it's like teeth. That's cool. There's very light band in there, but not enough to look like. Right, let's just leave it at Calcedony. I can, I'm pretty. Onto the rhyolite mixes. This is some pretty light rhyolite. I haven't looked at these again like usual. Let's flip it. Oh, it gets darker. Oh, wow. What's that doing? It looks brecciated, brecciated. Yeah, you can see where how the, how the minerals have filled the voids of the rhyolite. It must have been sitting sort of like that because you can see the horizontal line. 
after the minerals were left. Jeez, I love that. Look pretty sad. I've wet these because they're not finished. They haven't been through a polishing process, which there's a lot of different ways to do it. Ready? Oh, whoa. What? Oh. Yeah, that's really pretty. Yeah, look at the void. Look at the void in there that the Chalcedony's come in and filled. That's, that's stunning. And I wasn't expecting it to be that full of Chalcedony, but just beautiful. Got that bit there that I'm gonna need to if I'm going to polish this, or when I do, there's saw marks on here. And I was speaking to a close friend of mine as well. He was saying that tile soils will tend to give more of those marks left by the blade, as opposed to trim saws that are purpose made for lapidary uses. That was, um, that's unexpected from that on the outside. And I mean, look, even that chip there doesn't show that much calcedony. That's why I thought there'd just be a little bit in there. That's a thunder egg, I'm calling it. And it's spectacular. I didn't even film finding that rock when I, when I did the hunt. There you go. More beautiful insight into these, these just amazing rocks. Some of the knowledge that others have been so generous to share with me through comments and emails, etc. I've been so lucky. And uh, you all really do me a service by helping me out and hopefully in turn by showing this I can help others out. Thank you everybody so much. Have fun hounding everyone. Maybe sometime I'll be able to cut this guy. <laughs> Who knows?